You've seen this effect in show openers and Instagram posts, and if you're like me, you thought, hey, that's pretty cool, I want to try it myself. So here's how I did it, mostly in Blender, mostly. You can start by using any animated object. Being that I wanted a person struggling, kind of like that freaky scene in Fire in the Sky, which is a great family movie, by the way, I'd use Mixamo. If you go this route, you'll need to use Mixamo too, but it's a free account. I chose this laying moaning animation on a mannequin and lowered overdrive to 2 so the animation would be slower. Then I hit download. Chose FBX for a very good reason I'll explain in a bit. Set 24 frames a second because I like that frame rate, and left the other things alone. Great, it downloaded. Next, in Blender, I did something to default something and imported the FBX from Mixamo. Here's why I chose FBX. See that animation offset? FBX import allows you access to that, which shifts the start time of the animation on import. That's a very important thing for this effect, and it saves us a lot of time that I'll show you in a bit. Now, I changed that to 48, left everything else alone, and I hit import FBX. There he is, groaning in Blender, like he just spent five minutes on Twitter. See how the animation starts at 48? This is perfect. So now we begin. I moved the guy down to lay on the floor, and I set his origin to 3D cursor. This isn't super necessary, but usually heads off problems you may have later, or not. There, he's moaning on the ground. Next, I'd created a grid to serve as the floor and made it 8 meters large. I just wanted it to cover most of the area the camera's gonna see later. I named it floor, then duplicated it, raised it above the pore sap, scaled it down to about half the size, and renamed it cloth. Now, effect time. I selected the floor on the physics properties tab, and I hit collision. This makes the floor a collider. Then I'd selected the object mesh part of the character and made that a collider as well. After that, I selected the cloth and I hit cloth. Imagine that. But when I hit play on the timeline, yep, it works. I mean, it looks pretty stupid right now, but I'd ran this on very low resolution cloth geometry. I got an immediate response showing me how it works, and I can refine it from here. With simulations, it's best to test on low resolution first, then dial it up as it saves time in look development and, and sanity. Now that I knew it worked, I needed more resolution on the cloth. So I added in a subdivision surface modifier for the cloth, placed it above the cloth so that the cloth sim will run on the subdivided mesh, and I hit play. Yep, much better. Though I'm pretty sure fingers don't go through cloth all that often, so I needed to fix this. I'd also hit shade smooth here to make the faces appear smoother. More resolution might work, I'd set the subdivision viewport level to 4 and I ran it, and it's slower and nope, still fingers. A good trick here was to play with quality steps. I'd increase these on the cloth panel to 25 and ran it. It was looking a bit better. This is usually all trial and error, and there are lots of options, but I usually stick to the simplest ones and see if I can get the look first before I go adjusting all the other settings all over the place. When I'd increase the quality to 50, the fingers were gone. Cool. It will run slower, as I'll show you in a minute. But this works, and I don't need to remember to write down 50 different settings in 50 different places in Blender. I decided that a subdivision level of 2 was good enough for this, and I went to cache it. Caching is necessary when doing sim work, as it bakes out the frames and lets you play the animation back in sort of near real time, mostly. This allows you to see what the simulation will look like and do flipbook animations and see if there's anything you want to change before you commit to rendering. This file will be up on Patreon if you want, link is in the description. I can't add the FBX though as it's against Mixamo's terms of service, but the settings will all be there. In the cloth panel, I'd set the frame start to 1 and the frame end to 150, and I hit bake. This is where the whole import at frame 48 offset thing works. It allows the cloth to settle from frame 1 to 48, and we will render starting at frame 48 later, so we magically don't get the cloth settling part, and just get the animation that we want. Two seconds is a good settle for this sim, but more time is usually better on larger sims, as the sims will often do some crazy looking stuff while they're settling, if that makes sense. Baking this took about an hour on a Threadripper system. Blender simulation works, and it works well, but it can be very slow at the moment. It's always a toss-up. Once I'd played the animation back and was happy, I threw in some lights, gave the cloth a basic principled shader with a high roughness, and rendered it out. Here's the result. Not bad. Here's one with a different camera move in a box blocking out the edges of the cloth. It's a fun effect and it's great for titling and horror stuff and, you know, whatever. I hope you learned something and had fun watching this. Thanks, and have a great whatever. See ya.